everyone, welcome back. I'm Mrs. Kinman and we are ready for another third grade summer learning lesson for reading. We are on lesson number four, so let's get started. As you know, we always start with our mindset. We make sure that we have the right mindset so that we can learn as best as we are able. We've got our learning gems again today. It's my favorite way to get ready to learn. I'm gonna share with you my learning gems and I want you to think about your own as well. So the G, something that I'm grateful for. Well, I don't know what it's like exactly uh, when you're watching this lesson, but I'll tell you the weather today is wonderful. We've had a few days of really great weather and I am really grateful for that. Something that I am excited about is the topic of our article today because it's related to video games and I think that a lot of you are really going to like the article. I'm really excited to share it with you. Something that I am motivated to do is I am motivated to finish a book today. I know I shared with you last week that I really wanted to read every day and I've been doing pretty well on my goal and I think I'm ready to finish a book today so I'm motivated to do that when I get home. And that S, something that we can, that a success I can celebrate this week is that um, we were able to plan a family uh, camping trip for later this summer. We didn't know if it was going to happen and I feel really successful that we're going to be able to do it. So those are my learning gems. Reflect on your own as we get ready to look at listening, Larry, here. Now, in order to be ready to listen and ready to learn, we have to think about all the ways that we listen. We know listening is not just about our ears, it's about lots of other things too. So let's get ready to focus that attention. Our eyes are looking toward the speaker. Our ears are both ready to hear. Our mouth is quiet. Our hands and feet are quiet and still and to yourself. Your body is facing toward the speaker. We call that tracking the speaker. I hope that you're facing me just like I'm facing you. We are ready to listen with our brain. So we're gonna think about what's being said, really have that great mindset so we can learn as much as we can. And lastly, we listen with our heart. Consider the speaker, consider what we're talking about and really take it to heart and take it in. So I think that your mindset is ready. You are ready to listen, ready to learn. So let's get started. We're gonna start with some word work. Now, a review from last week first. Last week we talked about synonyms. Do you remember? What are synonyms? Synonyms are words that have the same or nearly the same meaning. For example, exit and leave. We're gonna add on to our knowledge and talk about antonyms. Have you ever heard that word before? Antonyms are words that have the opposite meaning. For example, up and down. One thing that's important to know about antonyms is it truly is the opposite. Not just something that's not like it, but something that's directly opposite. For example, the opposite of up is not over there or sideways. The exact opposite of up is down. Think about two ends of a line. Whatever's on opposite sides, that is what would be considered an antonym. Let's practice. What is an antonym or a word that means the opposite of happy? I came up with sad. Now, there are many synonyms for sad that would be considered an antonym of happy. So if you came up with a different word, such as unhappy, that would be acceptable. That would still be an antonym. Let's try another one. Open. What's the opposite of open? The antonym would be close. Push. Think about a door. What's the opposite of push? Pull. Now this one's kind of a challenge. What is it the antonym or the opposite of freeze? Do you know what it's called? Thaw. The opposite of freeze is to thaw. Nice work. Now we're going to combine what we know about synonyms and antonyms and we're going to practice it with some words and some sentences. You're going to have to follow the directions very carefully to know if you're looking for a synonym or an antonym. Now to do our responses, you're gonna have your fist ready 
And just like we answer our under, check for understanding questions in previous lessons, you're gonna use a finger response, okay? For A, B, C, or D. Are you ready? We'll read them together. Choose the word that means the same or about the same as the underlined word. The dog seemed very sad. A, angry, B, careful, C, excited, or D, unhappy. Ready? One, two, three, respond. D, unhappy and sad mean the same or about the same. They are synonyms. Nice job. Now choose a word that means the opposite of the underlined word. When you hear that word opposite, you should automatically think the antonym. We always have pizza at school on Thursdays. A, sometimes, B, never, C, often, or D, happily. Ready? One, two, three, respond. You should be holding up two fingers. The answer is B. Never is the opposite or the antonym of always. Let's try another one. Choose a word that means the same or about the same as the underlined word. The horse is exhausted after the long race. A, rested, B, tired, C, angry, or D, awake. Ready? One, two, three, respond. Two fingers, the answer is B. Tired and exhausted mean the same or about the same. Choose the word that means the opposite of the underlined word. My bus always arrives early for school. A, on time, B, safely, C, timely, D, late. Ready? One, two, three, respond. Late, late and early are opposites. That is the antonym. Nice job. Now we're gonna move on to our fluency practice. This is our second read of this passage. So you should be able to read it a little more quickly with a little bit more accuracy, which is all signs of, of reading more fluently. Remember to pay close attention to punctuation and do your very best reading, okay? Make sure you're sitting up nice and tall and your eyes are on the screen so that you can read out loud with me. Nice and loud, I wanna hear you, ready? Claire the crab lived in the ocean. People were scared of Claire. She did not know why people were scared of her. One day, she asked a man why. He said that her claws scared him. He did not want to get pinched. Claire said she would never do that. She was a friendly crab. She only wanted to play with people, not hurt them. How did you do? A little bit better than yesterday? I bet you did. Nice work. All right, <clears throat> excuse me, we're ready to go on. Our article today is called Students Plan Fortnite Video Game Marathon to Raise Money for Nurses. Are you intrigued? It's a pretty good article, I think you're gonna like it. Remember, we talked about those nonfiction text comprehension skills. How are we gonna direct that thinking voice? What file are we gonna pull out of our filing cabinet? What do you know about video games? What do you know about raising money? Do you know anything about Fortnite? Maybe you do, maybe you don't. Your thinking voice is gonna be focused on these questions. Again, we're still going to be thinking about the main idea and the key details. No matter what we're reading, we're always, uh, nonfiction wise, we're always gonna to wanna to pay attention to the text features because those are always going to help us understand. But we're also gonna take it one step further today and think about in the article, in the nonfiction text that we read, what is the problem and what is the solution? Okay? So let's get ready to read this article together. Whoops. Here we go. All right, now are we just gonna jump in and start reading right away? No, we're gonna take a minute, we're gonna preview the text by focusing on those nonfiction text features. The very first thing we see is the title. Students plan Fortnite video game marathon to raise money for nurses. 
we can see here that we have a picture. That's a strong nonfiction text feature. Most of us are very visual, and pictures are really helpful in a nonfiction text. It says the video game Fortnite can be played for free, which is why many charities use it for fundraising. Interesting. What's this called? That sentence that describes the photo. Do you remember? It's a caption. Nice job. All right, so I can see that the article starts. I see a section heading, helping from home. I see another section heading, a way to give back. And that's it. Okay, so we've looked at our nonfiction text features. We're thinking about the main idea, the key details, and remember, the problem and the solution. Ready? Let's read. Some people think video games are for lazy people. Imagine what they think about people who watch others play video games. Gamers have a different opinion. They would probably say playing video games could help save the world. That's what Jack Robinson, Luke Graham, and James Heckscher believe. They are graduating seniors from the Shipley School. It is in Burn Mar, Pennsylvania. The boys will play Fortnite for 24 hours every Friday to Saturday afternoon. Wow. Fortnite is a popular video game. People who watch their games will donate money. The boys will give the money to nurses fighting the coronavirus. The coronavirus is a flu-like illness. It began in China in 2019 and has spread all around the world. You're probably making a lot of connections as we're reading this text. That's outstanding. Let's keep reading. Helping from home. The Fortnite games were Robinson's idea. Many people are staying home because of the virus. Robinson wanted to help nurses from home. He'll donate the money from the games to the American Nurses Association. The boys hope to, to make as much as $2,000. Betsy Snook runs the Nurses Association in Pennsylvania. She thinks that it's a wonderful idea for helping nurses. Shipley teaches its students to help their community. Shipley is a private school. Private schools often give students advantages other schools do not. Shipley believes if you have advantages, you must give back. The Fortnite boys were already giving back. They've, they volunteered and raised money for different organizations. Brooke Donovan is a teacher at Shipley. She is helping with the Fortnite project. Donovan says Shipley seniors have to complete a senior service project to graduate. This year, seniors had to do the project from home because of the coronavirus. A way to give back. Fundraising through Fortnite games is not a new idea. Before, people raised money with TV marathons. Video game fundraisers are like modern TV marathons. The Shipley boys will be live streaming their games on Twitch. Twitch is the world's top live streaming platform. Twitch has raised more than $75 million for charities. Much of this money came from Fortnite games. It is free to play Fortnite. That's why many companies use it for fundraising. There are around 250 million Fortnite players worldwide. The Shipley players will play as a team. They may also add in a fourth team member. That person must donate their time and money. The head of their school played in their first game on May 22nd. Still, Heckscher says it's about more than video games. They want to help save the community and the world. The boys say their families have also taught them to give back. Robinson's mother is named Nicole Robinson. She believes if you are lucky enough to be successful, you should give back. Isn't that interesting? We learned a lot. But what is the main idea? What are the key details? What was the problem that this article told us about? And what was the solution? That's what we're gonna reflect on next. All 
All right, so here we have the same infographic that we used last time. I love this analogy of thinking through the central, the central message or the topic, the main idea and the key details. Those are three separate things and we have to know that they're separate in order to really understand what we've read. So what would be the central message or the topic, the whole watermelon of the article that we just read? Well, really there would be two answers. Because we could say that Fortnite or video games is the topic, but also fundraising. So I would say there would be two answers for that. Either one would be correct. All right, so now that we've identified that central topic, what is the main idea of this particular article? What about Fortnite and fundraising? The main idea is that three seniors from Pennsylvania created a Fortnite video game fundraiser to raise money for nurses affected by coronavirus, right? That was the overall what that article was about. There were lots of key details or watermelon seeds that fit in with our main idea that helped support that main idea. But that right there is what it, the article was mostly about. So I pulled out a couple of key details. Whoops, I went too fast. These might be the same or they might be a little different than what you were thinking. Again, when it comes to key details, there's often more than one correct answer, but what matters is that you're not just pulling random sentences from the text or random things that you remember, but that you're really choosing details that go back and support this main idea. I said, Donovan says Shipley seniors have to complete a senior service project to graduate. This year, seniors had to do the project from home because of the coronavirus. And the boys will give the money to nurses fighting the coronavirus. These details, sentences or seeds from the article support this is the main idea. And then all of this is part of the whole central message or topic, which was about Fortnite video games and fundraising. Nice job. All right, remember I said we were gonna do one more thing with our article today. We're going one step further and we're thinking about problem and solution. Now, when we think about problem and solution in fiction text, we usually call it the conflict and the resolution. Problem, solution means the same thing. And as you can see with my graphic here, they fit together like a puzzle piece. The problem is what's wrong, the solution is how it's fixed. And those things go together to give us nonfiction text and help us to understand about the topic we're reading about. So let's think about the problem and solution that we can identify in the article that we read together. Now, I know that as we're doing all this comprehension work, it's difficult when you don't have a copy in the text right in front of you. I totally understand that. We always teach students to go back and to use the text, go back and reread the story or reread the article. We often underline or highlight, and I know that that is definitely a strategy that you like to use. It's a strategy I like to use too. And I know that's not possible with how we're doing our learning today. So just do the best with what you can remember, okay? So what was the problem in, this, in the article? The problem was that seniors at the Shipley School must complete a service project in order to graduate. However, during this time, people are staying home. Some of the people who are courageously fighting the disease are nurses and they need help. That's the problem. How was that problem solved? According to the article, how was that problem solved? Well, the three friends will set up a Fortnite video game marathon. People can participate from home. They will pay to play with them. And all of the money will be donated to nurses who are fighting coronavirus. This benefits the community and fulfills their service project requirement. So this is the problem from the article. This is the solution for how it was solved or resolved. Nice work. All right. Let's do a little check for understanding. Again, you're just gonna do your best. I know you don't have the text there in front of you, but I know you can do it. Ready? According
according to the article, why did the students plan to play the Fortnite video game? A, they wanted to help their families. B, they were bored at home. C, it was part of a school project. Or D, it was their teacher's idea. Ready? One, two, three, respond. You should be holding up three fingers. The answer is C, it was part of a school project. That was their why. How will the Fortnite games affect nurses? A, nurses will play Fortnite while staying home because of the coronavirus. B, nurses will be unable to play Fortnite while they fight the coronavirus. C, the boys will learn skills while playing Fortnite that might help nurses. Or D, the boys will give the nurses the money people pay to watch them play Fortnite. Ready? One, two, three, respond. Answer choice is D. You should be holding up four fingers. They're going to give the money to the nurses. Read the sentence below from the section, A Way to Give Back. I underlined it here for you. The head of their school played in their first game on May 22nd. Which word could replace head without changing the meaning of the sentence? Hint, they're asking you for a synonym. Remember our word work? A, coach. B, leader. C, nurse. D, teacher. Ready? One, two, three, respond. Two fingers, leader. I can switch that out and it wouldn't change the meaning of the sentence. The leader of their school played in their first game on May 22nd. Nice job. All right, now I've got an, um, a quick video for you. It's not about specifically one video game, but we're gonna connect what we read in the article to this video about careers in video game development. Remember, an informational video is very similar to an informational text. The same comprehension skills are needed to understand both a text and a video. And this is a platform that you will often see in school and on assessments. So we're going to connect what we know to this uh, video, and I think that you're going to like it. It's really interesting. Let's practice. American consumers spent more than $15 billion last year on video and computer games, a trend that has led to creativity both in the private and academic sectors. Reporter Andrea Vasquez gives us a look at how one university is graduating the next generation of game developers. At a time when 59% of Americans report playing video games and the average time people spend online has outpaced TV viewing hours, the gaming landscape leaves a lot of space for developers to experiment. One place that's happening is at NYU Polytechnic School's Game Innovation Lab, where students and faculty create virtual bubble wrap, digital animation tools, and motion detecting games that are meant to help kids with math. Well, we basically play. <laughs> that's what we do. <laughs> This is where PhD students come to play. The lab opened in 2011, marrying function and aesthetics in pursuit of games. The idea was to combine technology and entertainment and to create a place where engineers could benefit from working with artists and designers to shape the future of entertainment technology. 1.2 billion people around the world are gaming, according to a 2013 industry survey. That's 17% of the global population. And it's not just guys. 46% of the world's online gamers are women. The way the video game design has progressed, it's definitely become a much, much more open and trying to become more broadly accessible medium. Students in computer science, art, education, math, and design find common ground in the lab, creating games for learning, health, and to solve problems. They uh, bring in billions of dollars of revenue a year globally, right? And they're just as much a part of everyday culture now as movies or novels, any of those things. But we're also really interested in how gaming technology and approaches can be used to solve practical problems like stroke rehabilitation or math education. Nearly two-thirds of gamers play with other people, either face-to-face -face or online. And to encourage that kind of interaction, the lab's artist-in-residence designed the Lightning Bug game, 
which calls for two players to touch hands so that one can shoot lasers out of a spiked sleeve. I'm exploring costumes as game controllers, so the intersection between wearable technology um, and games. He's wearing a power pack that lights up as he collects power, and then when we, when we hold hands, um, the power gets distributed from the power pack to the gauntlet, and that is the only way the player is able to shoot. Um, and then we play this in this large dome here. In decades of game development, technology has led to faster processing speeds, sharper graphics, and more elaborate storylines. Despite recent industry layoffs, those advances have created a larger pool of programmers and products. So at first, computers had a lot of constraints. You know, they didn't have so much memory, they were slow. Now they're really fast. We have all kinds of sensors, so there's no reason the computer can't come a lot further to you and interact with you the way that you're comfortable. Right? Read your body language, understand your facial expressions, be a little sensitive to when's the right time to interrupt you, that sort of thing. It used to be that making a game was actually a very technically difficult thing. So over the last couple of years, the tools have gotten so much better to the point where pretty much anybody can sit down and make a game if they want to. An indie movement has emerged in gaming, offering an alternative to big budgets and brand names, and making room for lesser known programmers to break in. But despite evolving technology at game creators' disposal, faculty in the lab warn students not to overcomplicate their games. I think this is a general trend, you know, with technology as it becomes smaller and more capable of doing things. How can we use this really affordable sensor to make, you know, this game? Or rather, you know, this is the game idea and this is how we can use technology to enhance the, the idea. There's still a lot to be learned from the smaller gems that we had by necessity 30 years ago when technology wasn't there yet. Well, now we have all 3D graphics and big controllers and everything, and everyone always wants to push that. And that's great, and I'm happy that that's happening, but I think there's a lot of space underneath that curve that hasn't been fully explored yet. More than half of all U.S. households own at least one game console. All right, so did you think about the main idea, some of the key details that you learned from that informational video? Maybe that's a career that you're interested in one day. It's very exciting. I think all of that looked really neat. All right, today for your at-home learning, you're gonna be focusing on main idea and key details. You're gonna read this informational passage about penguins. You are going to identify the main idea, think about the watermelon slice, and three key details or three seeds from that slice. So great work today. I hope that you've enjoyed us talking about nonfiction this week. Today, your code word is turtle. All right, so I hope that you have a great day and I'll see you later. Bye.